Today, we are going to talk about energy stored in a capacitor. Firstly, let's recall the charging process of a capacitor. Please look at this figure. A parallel plate capacitor is initially uncharged. The net charge carried by each plate is zero. So, no electric field and electric potential difference exist between the plates. Before closing the switch, energy is stored as chemical potential energy in the battery. After closing the switch, the field is established in the connecting wire. As we discussed in earlier lecture, the plate connected with the positive terminal of the battery is positively charged, while the plate connected with the negative terminal of the battery is negatively charged. When the capacitor is fully charged, two plates carry the charges with equal magnitude and opposite sign. As a result, some of the chemical potential energy in the battery is transformed to the electric potential energy in space between the plates. That's why the capacitor could store energy. To calculate the energy stored in the capacitor, we shall consider a charging process which gives us the same result as the process above. In this process, we move the charge from one plate to the other mechanically through space between two plates as shown in the figure. Initially, no work is required to move the small amount of charge dq from one plate to the other plate since no electric field in space between the plates. However, once the charge dq has been moved and deposited on the other plate, the very small electric potential difference is produced in space between the plates. In such a case, work must be done to transfer an additional charge dq because of the potential difference. We understand that the amount of energy stored in the capacitor must equal to amount of work done to charge the capacitor. Now let's calculate the energy stored in the capacitor. Suppose at some instant the amount of charge on the top plate is plus q while minus q on the bottom plate. The potential difference between the two plates is delta v. Delta v equals q over c. So, to transfer an additional amount of charge plus dq from the bottom plate to the top plate, the work dw must be done because the positive charge is moved from the lower potential to higher potential. Here, dw equals dq times delta v. Substituting delta v by q over c, we have this one. When the capacitor is fully charged, the charge on the top plate is plus q. Then the total amount of work done during this process is the integral of dw over the limits from 0 to uppercase q. The work done in charging the capacitor equals the electric potential energy Ue stored in the capacitor. Hence, we can express the potential energy stored in the charged capacitor by this equation. By applying the definition C equals Q divided by delta V, we have these three different forms. Please think about this process once again. We grab dq from the bottom plate and deposit it on the top plate. We repeat this process until the capacitor is completely charged. In this way, the charge Q is carried by the plates, and an electric field is established in space. So we may think of the energy stored in the capacitor as being stored in the electric field between the plates. For a parallel plate capacitor, delta V equals ED, and C equals epsilon zero A over D. With these substitutions, the equation becomes this one. Noting that AD is just the volume occupied by the electric field between the plates. We divide UE by AD and have the energy per unit volume represented by lowercase UE, which we call the energy density. The energy density is proportional to the square of the magnitude of the electric field at a given point. But please note that this expression is generally valid for the electric field, although it is derived from a parallel plate capacitor. 
So if we have a volume delta V occupied by a uniform electric field E, then the energy of the field could be simply calculated by this one, Ue equals energy density little ue times delta V. If the electric field is non-uniform, then how to calculate the energy stored in the field? The key is to find the differential energy DUE stored in the volume element dV. DUE equals energy density little ue multiplied by dV. Then integrate DUE over the entire volume to find the total energy. We could find dV by the approaches we discussed in the earlier lectures. So far, we have talked about many things about electricity. We explored the properties of the electric field produced by stationary charges. We call it electrostatic field. From the next lecture, we'll move on to a totally new topic, magnetism. See you next lecture.